finally free. My wife left me when I was pregnant with my kid and became engaged to another man while I was still married to her. It was all over the internet, her kissing the man and such, as well as images of him playing with my child. I mean, this stuff really got to me since I never got to spend time with my child. For four years, I was enraged. I grew to 325 pounds. I lost my job as well, and I had to work so hard to pay my legal expenses that I became bankrupt. I seldom see my kid in such a state. I recall crying alone in my driveway one day. I begged God to kill me because I was too afraid to do it myself, and I was imprisoned in misery. But it was after we divorced. I prayed to God and realized why. And God was there through it all, even though I couldn't see Him, and to be honest, I blamed Him for everything. On January 2, I repented and became a true born-again Christian and man. It feels so much better that I am truly happy. And the greatest part is that it has nothing to do with this planet, my child, my wife, or money, since they were all stolen from me. When I had nothing, I discovered pleasure. And that is not something that can be taken away from me. All the other stuff is simply additional. I found consolation in the texts. I don't mind if I have another wife. I know how easy you may lose it all, and if that's your whole life, you'll be imprisoned in sorrow like me. But by God's mercy, He melted me, and I repented. My faults were caused by my blindness, and I had no idea what I was doing. But, if we believe, Jesus cleared the road for us and took pity on us via His sacrifice. And once you believe it, it's sealed for good. All you have to do is declare that your sins have not benefited you and pass them over to Jesus on the cross, and He will take and carry them for you. And you transform into a new beast. And it's as easy as that. You don't have to shout or talk in tongues. You don't even have to conduct nice things to keep it going. It's repentance. Once you believe and you're done. Following that, I dropped weight, it simply fell off of me, and I gained energy all of a sudden. When the judge divorced us, it was as if a piece of my soul returned. Everyone started remarking on how I looked. I'm talking about everyone who knew me. Everyone compliments me on how amazing I look and how muscular I am. My father said that I seemed to be growing taller. My hair seemed to grow back, but it was thinning down. I tidy my home, put on cologne, and purchase attractive clothing. I genuinely complete tasks, and I stopped blaming myself and internalizing the reasons she went. I simply assumed she was lost and in need of Jesus, and I'm not going to put it on myself. I don't have to punish myself for her transgressions. I may errors, but she is to blame, not me. The previous four years have been a shambles and I am finally free. I didn't date or have for the whole four years. I launched a company immediately after my divorce, and it is now lucrative. It's finally earning me a lot of money. I also scored a great price on a sports vehicle. It's like such a good bargain you won't believe it. I'm currently modifying it. Installing red leather upholstery, purchasing rims, and repainting the brake calibers. I took L after L for the past four years, but I persevered. I had lost faith in God, I had little money, I seldom saw my child, and I was generally unhappy. But when the divorce was finalized, I stopped blaming God. I hated what happened to me, but it taught me a lot about mental toughness, fortitude, self-confidence, and self-worth. I grew into a man. I recognized I was harmful just by being around her. My pastor used to lecture about witnessing a caterpillar emerge from its cocoon when I was a youngster. He used to say it's a sad sight to see, but if you ate the caterpillar, it'll never fly. The effort helps to create the muscle required to fly. It could never fly without that battle. I'm outside the cocoon, waiting for my wings to dry so I can fly. When I glanced in the mirror the other day, I didn't recognize myself since I was so healthy and fit. I weighed 325 pounds at my heaviest and smoked. I stopped smoking and lost 240 pounds. The weight just left on its own with little effort. I had a nervous breakdown. I'm expecting a six-pack. I'm back in the kitchen. I used to adore going to the gym and doing 20 pull-ups. I haven't done it in four years, and I can only do 10 now, but I'm getting there, so keep going. Story 2. My, 34 female, relationship with my BF, 33 male, suddenly changed. I don't know what to do and how to restore things again. Hello, for the last three years, I, 34 female, have been dating my current BF, 33 male. The first two years were fantastic. We both work in the same profession, and we both work as teaching assistants at a university. I began preparing for the last step of my PhD around a year ago, to be exact, 13 months ago. 
he had already completed his. When I do anything essential, I tend to concentrate all of my attention on one item and ignore everything else, which is exactly what happened in this instance. I was so preoccupied with my academics and research that I completely disregarded my BF, which I admit. Another thing I should mention is that he was the ideal companion during this whole time. He would assist me with my chores, cook for me, stimulate me when I was down, and so on. We become more like housemates during such times. We never had throughout this time, never went on dates, and I was so engrossed in my work that I didn't even notice. Last week, I received my diploma, and it was meant to be the best day of my life. After that, he brought me to a party, and I had a good time. When we came home, I approached him to kiss him, but he stopped me and said we'd talk tomorrow. He told me the following day that he would be leaving me. That was the worst shock of my life, since I had believed everything was wonderful up until that point. He mentioned how I ignored him this year and how he struggled with feelings of abandonment, that he became at the bottom of my priorities, that I didn't even notice that he slept on the couch the past couple of months. I honestly swear to God, I didn't notice this. I thought our sleeping schedules didn't match, that's all, and that he stayed with me to fulfill his duties as a BF until I got my degree and stood on my feet. But now, this shook me to my core since I had no idea there was an issue because he had never expressed anything to me over this time period. I attempted to apologize, and we both burst out crying, but he was insistent about it. Two nights ago, he began packing his belongings, and we got into a furious disagreement with lots of sobbing on my end, during which I reminded him that we should never give up on our relationship and should fight for it. He didn't say anything, he merely stated. I'm not sure he didn't pack his belongings and left till now, but he spends all of his days outdoors and only returns in the evening to sleep. When he arrives, he asks how I'm doing and if I need anything or assistance. Then he begins to clean up after himself, assist in housekeeping, take a shower and sleep on the sofa. We don't make small conversation and I'm not sure what he wants. I attempted to tell him that we needed to discuss and he answered again I don't know, followed by why? to which I was at a loss for words. I'm not sure what to do or, or how to cope with the issue right now. I'm completely stumped here. Story 3 My, 28 female, brother-in-law, 33 male, told me he was in love with me last night. My spouse, 30 male, and I celebrated his birthday with his family, parents and brother, last night. They traveled from a distant section of the nation to be here, since it was a significant birthday. We had a little dinner party with just the five of us, which was a lot of fun, and his parents retired to bed at midnight. The three of us, husband, brother, and I, remained up a little later, just talking and hanging out, until my husband stated he was weary and wanted to go to bed. I remained downstairs to tidy and prepare for today. My brother-in-law remained as well to assist me. We were neither tired nor sleepy when we finished, so we sat outside with a few of drinks, which is when he stated that he had been in love with me. He told me he had loved me for years, that I was the most kind and beautiful person he knew, and that I was the only one who ever fully understood him, and that he felt the same way about me. I was very perplexed by his statements, partially because we were both somewhat inebriated, so his English was a little rambly and my understanding abilities were not at their finest. My brother-in-law and I have always had a close relationship. He even lived with us for a few months after we married, but I've never been drawn to or had romantic feelings for him. I've always considered him to be one of my closest friends, so this discovery has taken me completely by surprise. We want to return to my husband's hometown, where his family still resides, since we want to create a family and want our children to grow up love and surrounded by people who love them. I am extremely close to his family. His parents regard me as if I were one of their own, and until tonight, I assumed his brother thought of me as a sister as well. I'm afraid of upsetting my present relationship with his family particularly because my own family rejected me when I chose to marry my husband, and his family has served as his surrogate family for me. I'm staying home today despite the fact that we were all scheduled to go out for a birthday picnic, but I insisted on everyone else going without me since I was just a little hungover, despite being the most sober of everyone. I feel terrible about spoiling my husband's birthday, but I'm also at a loss for what to do. Should I inform my husband? Wait till everyone has gone. Can I discuss this discreetly with Ma? Brother-in-law, should I simply blame everything on the booze, even though it is most likely not the case, or should I pretend I was too intoxicated to remember anything? Any and all advice is welcome. Thanks.